Red Brick Media. All quality CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our Dawah work, supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Anyone expecting me to teach them karate right now? Just leave, they're not going to get anything like that. Uh, most people, when uh, I meet, they're always surprised. They're always surprised and they say, um, where are you from? Um, and I I'll always tell them, I always ask them, just guess. No one has ever gotten it right before. I mean, since I was young until now, nobody's gotten it right. It's not very often you hear a uh, Muslim from, uh, from Vietnam. Most people don't realize though, it actually was uh, a Muslim country a long time ago. It was actually a Muslim country a very, very long time ago. And um, the Muslims there were persecuted very severely after they lost the country and most people actually fled to either southern China uh, or the Philippines and uh, a lot of people went to uh, Indonesia also. And so you'll see that um, there's a great uh, influence, especially people in Aceh. They have the same dialect as the Muslims that are in uh, Vietnam right now. And um, as was mentioned in terms of introduction, uh, I was born in Vietnam and believe it or not, uh, while I was born, I was born in the days of the war. And so um, I wasn't born in a hospital or anywhere like that because it was very, very difficult. And uh, my father told me uh, about the day that I was born. And um, it was, of course, during the war. And when he came out, after I was born, he came out to try to get food and things like that for me. And uh, he almost um, got hit by a he said it was like it sketched him in the head, and it just made a cut on his head. So it was probably one more, one inch away, only. And so that's and that's when I was born. I came out crying, probably because the bombs were going off during those times. And uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it easier for our family to go to the United States. And my father actually did not want uh, to go to the United States. He wanted to go to a Muslim country. Because, um, but at that time, I think Malaysia's, Malaysia was not accepting anyone. They were not accepting any refugees or anything like that. And so the only options uh, I think he had were either the United States uh, or France or something like that. One of the European countries. And um, when he didn't want to go to the United States because he was afraid, what he thought in his mind was, you know, they're not going to give me any water to drink. Everyone there drinks wine. <laughs> and so he says, you know what? It's the only way, the only, only people who are accepting. We're not going to stay in this refugee camp for another few years hoping this person or this country or that country will accept us. And so he said, you know, Put our trust in Allah and we went. When we arrived in Seattle, we came to Seattle, Washington, uh, because I think there was one other family that was there that was from uh, you know, our area. And um, I, I grew up just as a normal kid, a normal kid. And growing up in the United States, I went through you know, the regular schools there. And during ele in, in elementary school, there was a teacher that I had. Now that teacher always used to ask me about Islam. 
used to, and everywhere I went, I would go, at every grade level that I would go, they would always say, you know, you're the first Muslim student I've ever had. First Muslim student I've ever had. And probably some other people, you know, other people, other Muslims also, maybe they were practicing, but at that time, uh, generally there were not too many Muslims you know, in, in Seattle. There was only one masjid and probably a handful of Muslim families only. And so, this teacher of mine, he was not Muslim, he was like, uh, I think, a, a fifth grade or sixth grade teacher at that time. He used to always ask me questions about Islam. In the middle of the exams and tests, he would take me out of class, he would ask me very, very, you know, very, very difficult questions about Islam. Most of the, most of the questions that he asked, I didn't know. And so, I, remember, I still remember one question, one straight question, he asked me. He pulled me out of the spelling test, right? And he said, he said, what's the Islamic ruling on suicide bombing? Like this is, <laughs> I think I was 11 year, 11 year old at that time. I said, suicide bombing. I don't know. I'll come back. I'll, maybe I'll, I'll go ask. And I went around and I started asking. You know, I went to the imam and I asked him. But every day he would ask me a new question, and uh, so I started reading. I said, you know, I'm a Muslim. I should really know a lot about my my deen. And you know, during those days, we didn't have the internet. You can't go and just actually Google. And books were very, very expensive. And so because this teacher star always started to ask me questions about Islam, he was the one that actually got me interested in reading and learning about Islam. So every time he would ask me a question, and, uh, and during that time, we didn't have too many Islamic books also. And the books were terrible. Let me tell you, the translations that were coming from, I think, Pakistan and some of the areas, the people did, you know, it was terrible English. You could barely make out what was being written. And so, my father, alhamdulillah, I would order books and he would, he would be okay. And I remember, I used to order a lot of books. And he would be okay, as much as, you know, as long as I was ordering Islamic books, he was very, very happy. That I was interested in and wanted to learn about Islam and wanted to read about Islam. And uh, when it came to like video games <laughs> and the likes, he would never buy us like video games. <laughs> and everyone would have the video, video game systems before, my, before I would have them, or I would never have them, I would just have to borrow, go to my cousin's house, uh, and so forth. And so, <laughs> but when it came to books, even if I spent a thousand dollars, he would not mind. So I got a very large library and started to read and um, got to the point where Alhamdulillah when it was uh, Christmas time uh, in class, the teacher of course, they, during those days they had like Christmas celebration in, in class and the, the classroom was decorated with all kinds of things. And so I told, the, I told my teacher, I said look, every time somebody, every time it's Christmas time you guys decorate and celebrate Christmas. So I told him, I said, you know what, it's Eid. I want everyone to celebrate Eid also. So I got my whole classroom. Every time it was Eid, we decorated the classroom with Islamic stuff. And everybody, we had, we had our Eid parties. And I was the only Muslim that was in the classroom at, at that time. So actually, this teacher to this day, this teacher, he was one of the nicest teachers. But at the same time, he got me interested, uh, you know, interested in, in really reading about Islam and learning about Islam. And from that time on, from that time on, um, you know, he used to have, they used to, we used to have a time when they would ask us, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, you know what, I want, I want to be someone who's very knowledgeable. I want to be someone who knows about Islam, and who can teach people about Islam. So that if anyone can ask me also that I would, inshallah, maybe, uh, know a little bit about it and, and it will be able to answer. And uh, that was that was one of my du'as that I used to make when I was when I was young. Another du'a that I made in my sujood, I would wake up uh, and I would pray. 
And um, I would, I asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I said, in, in my sujood, Ya Allah, inshallah when, when I enter Jannah, I would like the Atari 2600. Does anybody know what the Atari 2600 is? But raise your hand if you know what the Atari 2600 is. MashaAllah, <laughs> the Atari 2600 was one of the first game systems. It had um, one controller with a red button only, just the red button. And they would have like sticks that go up and down, up and down, and back and forth, and the ball would go back and forth, and they would call that football. And then they would also call that uh, ping pong or table tennis, and, and so forth. And so, not only did I ask for that, I said, Ya Allah, you know, this is Jannah, right? I'm in Jannah. I want the Atari 2600 with every single game that's ever been made for it. Every single game that's made for it. And so, of course, right now, if you gave me the Atari 2600, and actually, by the way, when I, when I told this story, one of the brothers bought me Atari 2600. Just like a couple of months ago when I went to Florida. And so my dua was accepted here. And you know what? It came with every game that was ever made for it. <laughs> also. But I don't even, and, and, and so I, I had this, the system, and I bring it home to my son. My son turns it on. He says, what is this? What kind of game is this? He said, this is the most boring thing that I've, I've ever seen. Just all, all the games. The, the graphics are terrible, everything is terrible. And I told her, I said, you know what? When I was your age, I wanted this in Jannah. I used to supplicate to Allah to have this in Jannah. The point here from this story is, you know in this world, you ask for some things. You ask for things, and then these are things that you want. And some of us might think, you know, we might think Jannah is like this and Jannah is like that. Whatever we ask for, we ask for the highest level in Jannah. You don't have to be specific about certain things because whatever you're specific about, you probably will not even want. Because you outgrow it. Already in this life, you outgrow certain things. When you're young, there are little things that you really want. But then when you grow up, it's like, you don't want them anymore. So when you're in Jannah, you know, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he mentioned that all the things that are mentioned in the Quran about paradise, the only thing that's the same is the name. We might, you know, some of us might not understand what that really means. But when we're asking for something in Jannah, when you have to ask for paradise, ask for the highest level of paradise, but let's say somebody asks for a Ferrari, or you ask for this and for that, Whatever you get, when you get to Jannah, whatever it is, it's going to be so much better than some of the things that you ask for. You, you wouldn't even want. You would not even want. Just like right now, my kid is complaining about you know, the Atari 2600. But that's something that I really wanted really, really bad. But in Jannah, the only thing that's the same is the words. You call it this, and it's, you know it, it's this, it's this, but it's, it's so much better. So like for example, if you, just like a long, a long time ago, you know before we had cell phones, let's, say, let's go back in time, 200 years, 200 years in time. If you were to tell your son, or you tell your, um, tell someone, you say, Can, call your mother, call your mother. 200 years ago, if your mother was in London, how would you go call, how would you call your mother? 200 years ago. You wouldn't, of course, 200 years ago, you would, it would take a long time just to get to London. You would probably have to go in carriage and horses and so forth, right? But, you would call differently. You would call your mother differently. Now, if I told you to call your mother, what would you do? You would take out your phone and call your mother immediately. But you still use the word call for that. But which one would you use? Which one would you Would you go on a horse to London to call your mother? Definitely not. And so, 
all the things that we want, you ask for the highest level in paradise. And you ask for it, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to forgive you and, and save you from the hellfire. But as for the specifics of it, you, know, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa everything in there would be better than whatever you think. And so, when we, when, we, when we grow up, we tend to outgrow some of the things. And so you mature to another level. And so when a person has faith and he has the iman, you know, it's like an airplane ride. The higher you go, the smaller everything becomes. And so it will help you through your trials and tribulations. You think about the hereafter and just think about the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for us, uh, for, for the believers and those uh, who are obedient to him in the hereafter. I know, actually I didn't know what, um, when I came up here, I didn't know what, what story actually to tell. Uh, <laughs> a lot of little stories, but uh, I just wanted to share, um, just wanted to share that my, my dua. <laughs> when, I was, when I was young, we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us how to learn this. And then it's first one I just had a second one. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم